What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today I'm going to be showing you more than 85 new features and changes found in iOS 15 beta 1 and I'm sure I'm going to be discovering even more hidden features in the coming weeks. So make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel if you are not already. That way you know more about this software than any of your friends do. Now this is going to be a very long video so I'm not going to waste any time. Let's just go ahead and jump straight into it and the first thing I want to talk about with iOS 15 is just the fact that all devices that were compatible with iOS 14 are compatible with iOS 15, including the iPhone 6S and the iPhone SE. So yes, a seven year old device is still compatible in 2021 with the latest software update, which is just insane and props to Apple for still supporting such old devices on their newest software. But anyways, let's go ahead and get into some of these new features and changes. And the first thing, of course, as you can see right here on my home screen is the new iOS 15 wallpaper. This is what it looks like in light mode. And if I go ahead to dark mode, this is what it looks like in dark mode. So inside of the settings, this comes pre-installed with iOS 15. If you go to wallpaper, choose new wallpaper, stills, it's the one right there up in the top left. So only one new wallpaper for now, at least in the first beta. Also on the home screen, we have a couple of app icon changes. So the camera application has a slight tweak to it. So we don't have the shutter button there on the left is iOS 14. On the right is iOS 15. You will see the minor change in the app icon for the camera. And if we go over, same with the weather icon right here. So the sun is just flipped in the weather icon. We also have a few new widgets in iOS 15. So you'll see we have App Store, we have Contacts, we have Find My, we have Game Center, Mail, and also Sleep. So all of those are new here in iOS 15. I know Mail is gonna be one that a lot of people are going to love. And also Game Center has this big jumbo size down here at the end. So pretty cool if you are into Game Center. Now also when it comes to the Files widget, we have a nice change here in iOS 15. So take a look at iOS 14 on the left, iOS 15 on the right. You can see the files, just widget overall looks better. It's more transparent, but the best part about it is that you're now able to select a specific location for this widget. So if you go to edit widget, you can actually choose a location now that this widget shows on your home screen. Whereas before it just showed, you know, kind of everything in the files app and you had no option to select a specific folder and it would just open it like that. So it was really kind of useless before, but now there's a lot more, you know, usefulness out of this widget in iOS 15, which I love, especially if you're on the iPad, this is going to be a nice change to the files widget. Also, when you set a smart stack and you go into edit it, you can see that the edit screen is completely different here in iOS 15. We also have the smart rotate. It used to be a little toggle like that, but now it looks like this down at the bottom. We also have widget suggestions down here and you can see you can go through like this and reorganize or remove them. So just a much better UI interface here for changing up the smart stack compared to iOS 14. If we go into the control center, you will see that we have a new section here called focus. And this is what I like to call do not disturb on steroids. So basically we have four presets right here, or you can create your own focus. So we have do not disturb personal sleep and work. And if I go ahead and tap on, let's just say work right here, and I wanna go ahead and edit this. So if I tap on these three and then go to settings, it will take me into the settings pane right here, which you can actually get to as well by going to settings and focus, and then to whichever one you wanna set. Or if you wanted to make a new custom focus, you could do that right there. But these are all you know pretty generic and you will probably use some of these. So if I go into work right here, you can see that you can allow notifications from certain people and certain applications, and only those people are those applications. And you also have time sensitive notifications. You have the share focus status. So basically this shows inside of messages when you are working or when you are in a focus, it will show this in messages to everybody who like tries to text you, they will actually see this. It doesn't send them a notification, but it will show in settings until you turn your focus off, which is actually pretty neat. And then we also have home screen customization. So you can have custom pages when you are trying to focus like on work. So if you wanted to have a page with like no social media that would help you focus, you could do that right there. Also, let me go ahead and disable this real quick. We have options right here where you can dim the lock screen, where you have delayed delivery for notifications. So the notifications will not get sent through until you're done you know, with your focus or with your work. We also have tied notification badges there as well. So you don't get distracted by seeing those badges and kind of knowing that you have 
some notifications winding on you. And you can see for phone calls right here, you also have the option to allow repeated phone calls. So if somebody tries to call you multiple times in a row, it will kind of bypass your focus and your do not disturb and you know push that call through because it could be an emergency. Also, you have allow calls from everyone, no one or favorites, and also your groups right there. So also focus status right here, you can set this and messages, you can turn that on or off if you don't want people knowing that you have that turned on. You can also have a auto reply if you would like. So really a lot of you know options and a lot of customization that you could do with focus, which again is do not disturb on steroids here in iOS 15. Definitely one of my favorite new features. Also, you can see what it looks like on the lock screen as well. I believe I am in work right now. So if I go to the lock screen, you will see what it looks like there. So we have this little icon on the lock screen and it will correspond to whatever focus your ends and minds work so it shows a little work icon right there if you have to press on that it pulls this up right here you can tap on these three dots and you can turn it on for an hour or until tomorrow morning go to the settings or you can change you know your focus right there if you would like to and just tap it to turn it off just like so and you'll go back to your home screen incoming text message notifications have a new ui here in ios 15 so you can see up top that is what the new ui looks like when you get a text message, you can see it shows the name, the message, and over on the left, it actually shows the picture of the person there as well, which is really nice. It's a lot more compact as well. Looks really good in Notification Center, and of course, when it comes in just like this as well. Of course, you can also have to press on that to do a quick reply if you would like. And if you wanna see it on the lock screen, let me go ahead and send myself another message. You can see it just looks very compact and nice sitting there on the lock screen, especially when compared or when combined, I should say, with everything else here on the notification center slash lock screen. And speaking of messages, we also have some changes to the messages application here in iOS 15. So you can see first off, we have the FaceTime icon up in the top right hand corner. And if you go ahead and tap on that, you can FaceTime audio or FaceTime video very quickly straight from messages. Also to get to the contact before on iOS 14, you would have to tap on the profile image there and then tap on info. But now in iOS 15, you can just simply tap on that contact photo and it takes you right to the information about that contact. Also, when you get sent multiple messages, instead of it taking up the entire screen and just sending five, you know, back to back to back images, now it shows it in this carousel view where you can actually go ahead and swipe through the different photos just like so. And you can also save them all by simply tapping on the little save button to the right and save to photo library. And up top, you can see it shows a grid showing exactly how many photos are there as well, which is really nice, really small thing, but really, you know, something that will make a difference in messages. Also, if somebody shares a link with you, you can tap and hold on that and then tap on pin and it will pin that link, which means it will show up in the shared for you sections throughout iOS 15. Also, I just noticed when you try to send a photo inside of messages, you now get the search bar here when you do that, whereas before it didn't show a search bar in iOS 14. Also, when you swipe up, you could see more images at once than you could in iOS 14. And then inside of the settings for messages, you can see we have a new section up top that says allow messages to access and it has focus, Siri and search and notifications. Then we also have the shared with you section right here that shows automatic sharing and what applications that will show up in. And that is what I was showing you earlier with the link that I pinned inside of messages. And taking a look at these settings in iOS 15, you will see that the settings are not full screen anymore. So in iOS 14, these sections would all span across the entire screen. So like all of these little sections right here would be the full screen. But now in iOS 15, you can see there's some padding on the edges so it doesn't go across the whole screen. So it makes it look more compact and just looks better in general, in my opinion. There might be a little bit too much padding, so they may work on that, but it does look better than iOS 14, in my opinion, because it's not full screen. Now, if we go into the notification settings, we do also have some changes in here. So first off, you can see under Siri, we have announce notifications, which is new. It used to be announce messages with Siri and Siri suggestions, those are all combined now, whereas they were separated before. So announce notifications is different from announce messages because of course, now it's going to announce messages and notifications from different applications as well. So if you guys use this in the past, you know how convenient it is. I love announce messages with Siri. However, announce notifications seems a little bit overwhelming to me. I don't really want to hear every notification that I get through my AirPods, but that is now a new feature here in iOS 15, and you could toggle it on on a per app basis. So whatever apps you want to get, 
you know, notifications announced from, you could turn that on right there, which is pretty cool, but I'll probably just be sticking to just messages. Now, also we do have a scheduled summary. So this is something new here in iOS 15. You also have the frequency here that you could set this. So you can have it up to 12 times per day. Also, you can set the time for the summary and the apps and the summary. And if you don't know what this is, there is a splash screen that shows exactly what this does. So if we go right here, you can see it says bundle non-urgent notifications and receive them in a summary at convenient times. So basically, if you're like working throughout the day and you didn't see all of your notifications, you will get the summary at the set time that will show you the notifications you got throughout the day. And I did also want to point out this time picker right here. So this is pretty unique. I didn't see this anywhere else in iOS 15 where it just pops out like that and you could change the time. So pretty cool. And then also if you go into an application under notification style right here, let's go into Amazon. You have the option to set the notification delivery to immediate or scheduled right there. We have a couple of small changes inside of the music application in iOS 15. So if we tap on the artist name or the song name right there. You can see we get a new UI for the menu here where it says go to album or go to artist. And we also have two glyphs right there, whereas before it was just arrows. And then if we open up the airplay menu, you can see a couple of changes here as well. So the speakers and TVs text is more opaque in iOS 15. And also there's more padding between that text and where it shows iPhone right there. There's just more space in between. So just a couple of small UI changes here in the music application, nothing major. Now we have some major changes to the Safari application here in iOS 15. So you can see the address bar in iOS 14 is at the top, but now in iOS 15, it's down at the bottom. And when you start scrolling, it gets small like it does on iOS 14 at the top, but it's just moved down to the bottom now. But what's cool is when you open up a new tab, so let's go into a new tab here. So let's go ahead to new. Let's just go to, let's just say apple.com. To go in between tabs, you do it just like you do in multitasking through apps. You just swipe back and forth on these on the address bar down here to go back and forth between your tabs which is really neat and very convenient it's a lot easier to type in you know the address of websites and switch between tabs now instead of having to use you know hand gymnastics and get all the way to the top to the address bar like it was before. So I really like this new placement of the address bar here and just the whole setup. There's also a lot more on the start page in iOS 15. So you can see we have the shared with you, which is what I talked about earlier, where you can see different articles that have been sent to you like via messages or you know somewhere like that. You also have the privacy report right here. So it shows 50 trackers were prevented. We have the reading list. We also have edit right here where we can actually set a background image for this start page like we can in macOS, which is pretty neat. And of course you can move things around right here and customize that starting page if you would like to. Also up in the address bar, we do have dictation. So you can do voice dictation, whereas you didn't have that before on iOS 14 and the address bar. We also have tab groups. So if you wanted to group these two tabs together, if you go ahead and tap and hold on the address bar right there, you can see move to tab group and you can move these to a different tab group or create another one. So if I wanted to move them to like the LOL tab group, I could do that right there. And if I pinch in, it takes me out to this where I can see all of my other tabs that I have opened. You can also do that by of course tab tapping on the little window icon right there if you want to. We also have these three dots right here, which pulls up the share sheet, which does look different than it did on iOS 14. So this is what the share sheet looked like on iOS 14. On the right is iOS 15, so it is cleaner. And we also have some additional options in there as well, like reload, we didn't have that before. We have a couple of new options in here in general as well. A lot of really nice additions to Safari, and that's not even it. We also have Safari extensions here in iOS 15. So we go into our settings and then go to Safari, and then down to extensions, you can see I already have one installed right here. But if you tap on more extensions, this will take you to a section in the app store where you can actually get extensions for Safari, just like you can on the desktop. So you can see here, I had one called Kablock, which is open source ad blocking. And basically this is what it looks like when you install it. And when you go back to settings, Safari extensions, you have the option to set this content blocker right there. So really cool that Apple is including the iPhone for extensions. We also have some changes inside of the calendar application. So when you go to add a new event and you can see right here where it shows the start and end dates, you can see the gray behind the date and the time here in iOS 15. Now when you tap on the time, you will see 
that we have the old scroll bar back. So a lot of people miss this little scroll wheel right here that we used to have back in the day. And this is what iOS 14 looks like. Of course you can scroll it, but they just did it a really weird way. And a lot of people didn't like it, myself included. But now we have the old school scroll wheel back inside a calendar. And it's the same inside of the clock application as well. Like if I wanted to add a new alarm, you can see that's what it looks like right there versus this is what it looks like on iOS 14. So the old style scroll wheel is back officially here in iOS 15 and I love it. Now FaceTime is one of the biggest changes in iOS 15 overall. So first off, right when you open up the FaceTime application, you can see the entire UI has changed. Everything looks different right once you open up FaceTime, even the colors, it used to be blue and black, now it's green and black. So you can see here, obviously we have a big difference in the UI, but we also have a lot of actual features and changes here in FaceTime as well. And the first one is create link. And when you tap on this, it actually creates a link for the FaceTime call and it actually works on any device, including Android and Windows computers. So now FaceTime is going to be able to work with any device. So obviously if you're not on an iPhone or a Mac, you're just gonna be able to open up the FaceTime call in your web browser, but still, that is a game changer for Apple and for FaceTime. You can also change the name of the FaceTime before you send it to anybody if you would like to right there. So if I just name it like try, I don't know, just something, some random word I just thought of, you could copy that link and send it to people and messages or in an email or anything like that. Now inside of a FaceTime call itself, you will notice several new features and changes here. So first off, up top we have this bar that shows where you can message. So if like if you wanted to send a text message to everybody or the person you're talking to, you can. You also have this right here, which is your speaker output. So you can have it just for, you know, obviously your speaker or you can set it to an AirPod if you would like. You have your microphone where you can mute or unmute right there. Your video where you can, you know, show your video or not show your video. This right here, which is actually share my screen. So now in iOS 15 and FaceTime, you're going to be able to share your screen to somebody via FaceTime. So it can be in a group or it can just be one-on-one -on -one with an individual. So this is going to help a lot for those who are the tech support for your family and friends. Now you can actually see their screen when you're trying to help them and it will save you hours of your time. So that is a really cool feature right there as well. Also, when we go ahead and tap on ourself right here, we have this option right here, which is actually for portrait mode. So you will see how there's no blur right now. If we tap on portrait mode, you will see how there is some slight blur. It's kind of hard to tell on a camera, but on the face, the blur, the portrait mode works really well. And it really looks like you're using a professional camera when you have portrait mode set up here in FaceTime. When we go back to here, we tap on the bar up here. You can see that we also have a grid layout here in iOS 15. So if you have a lot of people on a group FaceTime call, the grid layout looks a lot cleaner in my opinion. You also have the option down here to silence join requests. And then if you go to the control center while you're in an active FaceTime call, you will see these two brand new sections up top that say video effects and mic mode. So if you go to video effects, this is how you could just turn on or off portrait mode just like that. And then mic mode is very cool because you have standard, you have voice isolation, and you have wide spectrum. So voice isolation is going to kind of cancel out the background sounds and focus on your voice, whereas wide spectrum is going to kind of bring in some of the background noise along with yourself. So two really cool additions there to FaceTime when it comes to the microphone. And it's really cool that Apple could do that with just software. And then perhaps the coolest feature, and by the way, you can see portrait mode working right there on the camera. Look how good that looks. It's maybe hard to tell still on video. But anyways, the coolest feature about FaceTime, aside from the screen sharing, is SharePlay. So this is a new feature that's going to allow you to listen to music and watch movies or TV shows with multiple people at the same time. It's going to be synced you know, at the same time for everybody on the group FaceTime call and also like a queue for like a music album, the queue will be shared. So anybody can, you know, skip the song, change the order of the queue, delete a song out of the queue. It's all going to be shared and it's all going to be synced up, you know, at the same time for everybody, which is really, really neat and definitely something that I want to experience with a group FaceTime call pretty soon. We also have some changes inside of the photos application, starting off with the albums glyph down in the menu bar at the bottom. So you can see in iOS 15, it's a little bit more rounded off. The little albums right there are more rounded off. Whereas in iOS 14, it was very squared off right there. Now going to an actual photo, you can see we have some changes here as well. So starting off at the bottom, you can see we have this little eye down here at the bottom. And when you tap on that, 
you can see a lot of really cool information about that specific photo. So you can see exactly when it was taken. You can see exactly what phone took it. You can see the format. You can see the megapixels, the ISO, the exact dimensions, the file size. You can see pretty much everything you ever wanted to know about a photo from just the default photos application, just by simply tapping on the eye right there. You could also see exactly on the map where the photo was taken and you can also adjust the time so if like the time was wrong or you want to adjust it if you tap on adjust right here you could change that right here from the photos application and then also up here for live if you tap on the little drop down right there you could change the effect of the live photo without having to go into edit so you could change it from live loop bounce or long exposure so that's also really neat that it's right there and it's not you know deep within settings or anything and then when you click on edit right here you will see some changes as well starting with markup so there's a lot of ui changes in general but before it used to be the three dots up in the top right now it's just the markup icon right there and if you tap on that you can see markup turns off live photo that's fine and you can see you can mark up right away whereas before in ios 14 you'd have to tap on the three dots and then go to markup and then tap on okay and then you were able to mark up so it was a long tedious process not really long but it was just pretty annoying to have to do an extra step to get to you know be able to mark up the photo but now it's easier to do so with ios 15. also when you tap on the plus right here you will see that you have a new option for description and you can add a description for this photo and also some minor ui changes down here with the glyphs you can see that the effects glyph is a little bit different right there and same with the crop the crop is a little bit smaller than it was in ios 14. now if we go into the for you tab right here which by the way for you the little glyph icon is a little bit smaller as well than it was in ios 14. but if we go to one of these memories right here you can see first of all it takes up more of the screen right here and we have the little heart and the three dots right there at the top where we didn't have that in ios 14. but if we tap on this this is where we get some nice changes as well so it starts off right away and you can see a whole new ui change here in ios 15. and down here in the bottom left you can actually change the songs and change the mood and go through these different it says memory mixes right there whereas in ios 14 this was the ui you just kind of you know got to go through like this and it was just not near as modern looking as it is now in ios 15. so a nice change here to the memory mixes and i actually played around with this and i really like what Apple is doing with this. We also have some new features inside of the notes application. So we now have tags. So if you tag a note, I'll just tag it with the tag hashtag right there. If I tap on done, if I go back to my folders right here, you will see down at the bottom, we have a section for tags. And if you tap on the tag, you will see that it shows all of the notes that you included that tag in. So this is just another way of kind of organizing your tags. And you can also mention people if you are sharing the note. So like if you're sharing the note with multiple people, you can at them and it will actually notify them that you mentioned them in one of the notes. And you can do the same thing inside of reminders. So you can set a hashtag for just say tag right there. So you can see it's tagged, it turns blue. If I tap on done and I go back to lists, you can see at the bottom we now have tags and I can go ahead and tap on whatever tag I want or see all tags just like we could inside of notes. The spotlight search has been supercharged here in iOS 15 and it really shows a lot more information than it ever has before. And you can actually search through images as well. So like if I searched for cat inside of spotlight, you can see there it actually shows photos of me with my cat from applications. Now, if I did that same thing on iOS 14, you can see you don't get any photos or really anything from you know your personal life your personal photos or applications at all we can also now install and delete applications straight from the spotlight search without ever going into the app store so if i search for an application like lyft for example you can see there it shows lyft with a little download icon and when you tap on that it will actually start downloading it without ever even going into the app store which is very convenient and you can also delete applications straight from here as well so if i search for let's say uber if i tap and hold on that you can see i could delete the application straight from the spotlight search without having to go to the app library or back to my home screen to do that so spotlight search is just getting better and better every single year the weather application also got a redesign here in ios 15 so you can see that the time and the temperatures right here are bolder and bigger it also shows clear conditions tonight continuing through the morning doesn't show that in ios 14. also the clear has been moved below the temperature whereas before it used to be above and also the 10 day forecast looks a lot cleaner just looks a lot better instead of just having a sun it kind of has it on this little bar right here that shows the low 
and the high, whereas before it would just show the high and the low. So just kind of backwards there. If we go down a little bit, you can see also the air quality section has changed. And we also have temperature and we also have maps as well. So if you tap on this little grid icon right here, you can see the precipitation and the air quality on a map. So it's not going to be like Doppler radar. It's not going to be anything, you know, that good like you get in dark sky, but you can see it right here on the hourly forecast, which is awesome for a free application here in iOS 15. Also, if you tap on these three little lines right there, you can compare the precipitation to any other location and also the temperature. So if I change this back to the temperature and tap on these three lines, I can see the temperature of my location compared to all the other locations that I have set up inside of the weather app, which is neat. And if we go down, you have even more information here inside of the weather application. So it just looks a lot better. You have a lot more information here. And I wish you didn't have to go all the way down to see the feels like temperature. I wish that was closer to the top or that you can move these around, but you cannot. But it's still a big improvement over what we saw with iOS 14. And by the way, if you didn't want to go all the way down to get to the map right here, you can tap on this little map icon in the bottom left and it will take you right to that live map right there. Now, as for the mail application, we have a pretty nice change here in iOS 15. So if you go into the settings for mail and then go to privacy protection, you can see you have protect mail activity and you could turn this on or off. And if you read it, it says, mail privacy protection works by hiding your IP address and loading remote content privately in the background, even when you don't open the message. This makes it harder for senders to follow your mail activity. So that is definitely something I would recommend everybody turn on here inside of the mail settings. You can of course tap on learn more if you want to learn more about this as well. And speaking of tracking, if we go back to the settings and go into privacy and then into tracking, you will see that we have a slight verbiage change here to tracking compared to iOS 14. And then if we go back to the privacy section right here, then all the way down at the bottom, you can see we have record app activity. That is also new in iOS 15. If you tap on that, you can see it says, save a seven day summary of when apps access your data, like your location or microphone, and see when apps or websites you visit within apps contact domains. So you can see right there, you could save app activity. If you want to, it saves it as a JSON file right there. Of course, I don't have anything yet, but you will see, you know, some things in there over time to see what's accessing like your microphone, what's accessing, you know, different things on your device more than maybe they should be. And speaking of privacy and just your overall well-being online, if we go into settings and into passwords and we go into one of the passwords right here, you will see down at the bottom, it shows account options, set up verification code. So that is new. And if you tap on that, you can see it says set up verification code. If it supports using a verification code, visit the website to obtain a setup key. And if it offers a QR code, you can also long press on it and choose set up verification code to do this automatically. So you can scan it or enter your setup key right there straight from within the settings, which is nice. Now we also have some changes inside of the maps application. So the maps on iOS 15 are just higher quality just overall. And the glyphs have changed as well over on the right hand side. You can see that they're now black or like a gray instead of the blue that they were before. Also the compass is right there underneath. And also down at the bottom, you can see where it shows the temperature and things like that. That is also slightly changed here in iOS 15. Also, you can see for things like the Castro Theater right there, the icon on the map is different as well than it was on iOS 14. And when you tap on it, you will see a slight difference here as well. So you can see that directions and flyover are in two different spots now. And you can see the hours right here, the Yelp reviews, the distance. You could just see more information and, you know, just a better view. Whereas before it was up top, you could still see it, but just the UI has changed here in iOS 15. And of course, when you go up, and you go down to some of the other info right here, you can see just multiple UI changes throughout the maps application right here. Now, when we go to directions, let's go ahead and do directions for this. You can see that we have the option to leave now or schedule a time to leave. So you could also see how we have the globe view now in maps as well in iOS 15. You didn't have that globe view in iOS 14, but you could actually leave now or set when you want to leave. So you can see it says leave at or arrive by. So if you know what time you want to arrive by, or what time you're going to leave at, you could set that up so that the maps, you know, knows when you're going to be traveling to that location, which is cool. That is brand new in iOS 15. And if we actually start the trip, you can see we have some UI changes. So we have a couple of buttons over there on the right hand side on iOS 15. So we have the alerts button and also the big overview of the route button right there on the right. 
And then when we pull up from the bottom bar right here, you can see that this UI has changed as well. So we have add a stop, share ETA, report an incident and end route. So it just looks completely different than it did on iOS 14. So, and then you also get this prompt once you finish a trip as well. So it says, how is your route to the Castro theater? And you could thumbs up or thumbs down, which is new. That was not there in iOS 14, I don't believe. We also have some minor changes to sleep mode. So if we go to the edit sleep schedule in health right here, and then go to options, you can see we have a couple of new things. So we have turn on at wind down and also the sleep screen. Both of those were not here in iOS 14. Of course, those are two new features. So those are new here in iOS 15. Also the icon up in the top has changed as well. So if I go ahead and turn on the sleep right here for sleep mode, you can see we have the sleep mode icon up there in the status bar, which we did not have in iOS 14. Now, while we're inside of the health application, there are a couple of other changes here as well in iOS 15. So right here we have trends. This is brand new in iOS 15. And if we go ahead and see show all trends right here, it says health looks for trends in certain topics and can notify you when there's a change. So like if something has increased, or decreased over time, you will get some trends right here. So it shows that I'm trending lower for 22 weeks on flights climbed. So I haven't been, you know, hiking in 22 weeks apparently. So it shows that right there and consistent for my steps. It shows I've been consistent with my steps for six months, which isn't a lot. So it's probably a bad thing. And you can see a lot of different trends right here, which is pretty cool. And then also if we go into the sharing tab right here, you can share different things with your loved ones or with doctors, things like sharing medical records, and if you go ahead and tap on share with someone right here, it says in order to share your health data with someone, they need to be in your contacts list. So you can add that right there if you would like to. So this whole tab is brand new. We didn't have the share, the sharing tab in iOS 14. And then also inside of the mobility section here in health, there is a walking steadiness chart and you also get alerts if your steadiness is low and if that could result in a fall. So like if you're old and maybe you're not walking steady and you could fall and break some bones, you know, it will notify you when it detects that you're not walking as steady as you should. And there are also exercises to improve your balance inside of the health application now. Now inside of the wallet application, if we go down, you can see that our expired passes are now hidden. And that is thanks to a setting here. If we go into our settings and wallet and Apple Pay, you can see we have a new little toggle there for hide expired passes. And you can see it shows it right here with this little gray button. You can tap on that to see them if you want to. But also inside of wallet, you're going to soon be able to add car keys and your ID. So your driver's license will actually be able to be inside your wallet. And eventually you're just not going to have to ever carry a wallet again because your car keys and you know, your ID, everything's going to be on your phone. So that is not supported just yet, but it will be later this year. And Apple already said that TSA and others are allowing you to use that digital ID and you don't need a physical one. We can now use Siri when offline. So you can see here I am in airplane mode and I can ask Siri to do things that of course do not rely on the internet set timer for 10 seconds. And you can see there, Siri responds and actually does what I ask without saying you need to be connected to the internet. Stop timer. Apple also says that Siri maintains context better in iOS 15. So like if you ask follow-up questions without saying the full thing over, Siri will respond and know what you're talking about. So like if you say, who holds the NBA record for three pointers? And she tells you the answer. If you say, how old is he? Siri will know who he is and who you're talking about and answer accordingly. We also have some changes inside of the translate application. So you can see some UI changes right away. So you can see it just showed these two buttons up at the top, but now over here on the right in iOS 15, we have a little drop down for each one where we can choose a different language just like so. Whereas before we'd have to tap on it and it opened up this whole separate window instead of just popping up over top of you know the interface like it does here in iOS 15, which is a lot cleaner. And also you can see here, the whole interface, it just looks better on iOS 15. There's more options. We also have this new conversation tab down here where you could talk to somebody and it will translate in real time, everything that's being said through the mic. And you also have these three dots right here where you can play translations, you have auto translate and also detect language. And you can even change the way that you're talking to somebody. Like if you're talking face to face, if somebody's on this end of the phone and you're talking with them and you're you know, translating, they could see what you're saying right there. And I can see what they're saying right here and our different languages. So really neat additions to the translate application here in iOS 15. Now Apple is always improving on iCloud. And one thing that they're adding starting with iOS 15 is the ability to add temporary iCloud storage to transfer data over when getting a new device. So if you have a new device 
and you don't have enough iCloud storage to back up your device and transfer it, Apple will actually give you some you know, temporary iCloud storage just so you can transfer your data over to that new device. And then Apple also announced iCloud Plus, which is a VPN, a private email, and HomeKit camera storage for the same price as iCloud is now. So we don't have a ton of details on iCloud Plus yet because it's not available to purchase yet, but I will let you guys know when I know more information about the iCloud Plus subscription. So there you have it guys. Those are some of the brand new features and changes found in iOS 14 beta one. Again, I will have a lot more coverage on iOS 15. I will also be talking about the performance and the battery life and things like that in a future video once I've actually used the software for an extended period of time. Now, if you are a public beta tester, if you signed up on beta.apple.com, you will be seeing iOS 15 beta one sometime in July. But if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. It is almost 5 a.m. and I've tried recording this several times, so I would really appreciate it if you gave this a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you guys subscribe for a lot more iOS 15 and iPadOS 15 content coming very soon. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.